If someone asked me what is the most useful React pattern, then it would definitely be this one. This React pattern is not only super useful, but it literally changed the way I think about components in React. So let's take a look. Now let's start with the problem because I'm a real believer of always starting by asking why we are doing something and then come up with a solution. So here's the situation. We have this application here. I have opened two windows of it and it's a simple contact list or contact book application. And here you can manage your contacts so you can click on a contact to see the details. And you can also add a new contact. You have this create new contact model, and then you can also edit a contact. So you have the possibility to edit a contact from here. And also if you click on a contact name, you're going to see these details. And then if you click on edit, you have this edit contact page. Now these two views look really similar. On the right side, we have the title here in the top bar, this save and cancel buttons also on the right side of the top bar. And on the left, these are inside of this model. And then we have the same form in the middle. Now this is the problem. We have two components that look really similar and it does make sense intuitively to have one component for both of them. But at the same time, they are very different and trying to implement one component who looks so different depending on the context can be really tricky. So how do we do this? Well, let's take a look at the code. So here I want to show you a simple implementation of how you would normally do it. And then I want to show you how you can really simplify this a lot by using this pattern. So normally you would have an edit contact page and then here you would have your state for the form. Then we are getting the contact details from this hook. And then we have another hook for saving the contact details. We have a use effect to set the initial data in the form to show it to the user. And then we have our component. So we have our layout. As you can see, we have here in the right section of the layout in the top bar, we have our buttons. We have the title also here inside the layout. And then as children inside the layout, we have the form itself. Now, if you go to the contact model, it's actually the same. This is copy pasted code. But when it comes to rendering the UI, this looks completely different because we have here a model and not a page. And inside this model, we are uh, showing our form and then we're passing the title to this model. Now, if you want to create a component for this, the easiest way would be to use this pattern called compound components. So I have already implemented this and let me show you how it looks like. So I have created this component called edit contact compound. And this component has a few sub components. So we have a root component that I use to wrap everything. This is right now inside the edit contact page. And then it comes with a title component that you can just pass to the layout, a submit buttons that you can also pass here. And then we have our form inputs. And if we go to the model, it's going to look really similar. We have one component which wraps everything. And then we have our title that we pass here to the model. And then we have inside the model, the form inputs and the submit buttons, which means instead of having one component, we somehow split it into multiple components, but still they somehow work together. So if you go to the implementation of the component, this is just an object with different fields. And if you go to the root component here, I have moved all the logic that we had in the previous components, all these hooks, the use effect, use state, the mutations. And what I added here is a context. So using this root component means that you have a context and inside that context, you can have your components. And each one of these subcomponents, you can name them wherever you want and you can split it however you want. The cool thing here is that you can just use this context and grab the values that are interesting for you. So inside the submit buttons, we have a click handler and then a Boolean if it's loading right now or not. Then we have our form inputs that get access to the error form state also set form state to update the state. And then in our title, we just grab the contact and then return a string. And just like that, we could turn something that looks like this into something this simple 
and it's just super, super practical. And this is something that you can see in a lot of modern UI libraries like in Shatsi and UI, and this is the secret behind its flexibility. Thanks for watching the video and see you in the next one.